Okay. 
and bid me dance deeper. No tongue can bid me dance deeper. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look.
Father God, we just want to thank you for the day. Thank you for this time we get to just worship you, just to sing your praises, just shout to the Lord, and say there's no one like you. And that we can search for all eternity long, but just find that there is no one like you. Lord, in our times and our struggles and our the struggles we face in the hard times and the good times, you are there. And we just thank you so much for always being there with us. And when we lift our hands and, and we cry out to you that you are there to pick us up and hold us and carry us. Lord, as we go out today, that we always remember that there is no one like you and that you are always there for us. We just take a little bit of time just to reflect, just to think, just to lift your prayers up to the Lord. Thank you to our chapel worship team. And I think we experienced something unique this morning in chapel, something that relates to the very earliest church, singing without PowerPoint. It's just a new, it's amazing how the church has lasted so many millennia without PowerPoint. We're grateful for your presence here this morning. Good morning and welcome to chapel. We welcome you if you're a visitor this morning with us. My name is Joseph Modick. I serve as the university chaplain. We also welcome those who are watching via the live webcam, um, our friends and alumni around the world. So we're grateful that you're here this morning. Um, some of you who are new to the community, uh, whether you're faculty, staff, or administrators, or students, may not know that Eastern University, about six years ago, launched a PhD program in organizational leadership. PhD, a Doctor of Philosophy degree, the highest degree that a university can confer upon a student. And we are delighted that uh, this morning they are here because one of their faculty members is gonna be speaking to us. I just wanna have them stand up. They're colleagues, wonderful people. Um, the PhD program here at Eastern University in Organizational Leadership. Why don't you just stand? We wanna just thank you for your good efforts. They do like each other, even though they're sitting in various places this morning. Um, but we are grateful uh, for them and for the program. Uh, this morning, we are delighted to have with us Dr. Faith Gunjiri, who is an Associate Professor of Leadership Studies here at the university. She came in 2008, and I was uh, privileged to be on the search committee that brought Faith here to the university. Our community has been greatly enriched by her presence and teaching and scholarship since she's been here. Um, she uh, came to us from Yale University Center for Faith and uh, Culture. She has our Doctorate of Education in Leadership Studies from Bowling Green State University. She has a seminary degree. So she brings a wonderful integration um, of theology and leadership and uh, culture. I've had the good fortune of being, being able to teach with Faith, uh, a co-teach a course for the PhD program for the last four or five years. It'll be our fifth time doing this course together in the spring and it has been wonderful, the things that I have learned uh, from Faith with regards to leadership, but particularly what it means to be an authentic leader. And that's something we wrestle with in Christianity sometimes. What does it mean to lead well, to lead like Jesus? and certainly faith in her teaching and modeling has shown that to me. I also had the great opportunity um, a few years now to actually officiate at her wedding. So, um, and you can look at my website, Weddings Are Us. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do weddings that, that loosely, but it was wonderful. We had a wonderful wedding, her and her husband, Chaz, wonderful couple, many of us at the faculty were there. So it is with, with, with great joy and, and a privilege this morning to introduce uh, someone who teaches in the Campola College of Graduate and Professional Studies here at Eastern, uh, Dr. Faith uh, Gunjiri, and welcome Faith this morning.
Good morning. Is it okay to confess that I'm really scared? It's, um, this is not my natural environment. My natural environment is in front of a class. But um, since I love Joe very much, I said yes when he asked me to do this. So I, um, Joe just said something about how we struggle with the idea of being authentic leaders. And I think one of the things I've learned um, as I've lived my life, I'm almost 40 years old, uh, is that to be authentic, we also need to be willing to be vulnerable. So this morning I chose to share with you my vulnerability um, experiences I've had in the last two years, especially the last summer, that have really been tough, but that have allowed me to live out my faith um, in the hospital, at home, amongst my friends, and now hopefully amongst you. So I begin this story of loss and hope. Let's see whether technology will work. I guess, Joe, you're gonna have to make this thing move. It won't move for me. Give me a minute. Seriously, though, as Joe said, we did without PowerPoint for a long time. <laughs> so let's try without if it refuses to. Although there's a video I really want to show you. Anyway, I'll begin the story of loss and hope with a quote from Gerald May, an author that Joe introduced me to. The book is Addiction and Grace. And he says, if God, if God also creates us with an inborn longing for God, then human life is also meant to contain yearning, incompleteness, and lack of fulfillment. To live as a child of God is to live with love and hope and growth, but it's also to live with longing, with aching for fullness of love that is never quite within our grasp. So the question of the struggles and sufferings in life is one of learning to live in love, hope, and growth in the midst of our struggles, not without struggle. So let me tell you my story in outline form. As Joe mentioned, I got married a couple of years ago, and I was looking forward to a life of sharing our joys and sorrows, our highs and lows, our pains and pleasures, and everything in between. And yes, it's been all that and more. A few months into our loving and lovely marriage, we had a diagnosis of infertility. So here comes the lows, the pains, and the sorrows. The only chance we had at biological parenthood, the only path available to us, according to the doctors, is through assisted reproductive technology. So began the story that I'm telling you today, and the story behind the story that I'm trying to tell you today. It was tests, procedures, more tests, surgeries, some surprise surgeries, more procedures, all stand into a pain cushion with hormone injections. But finally, finally, success. It was a surprise for the doctors, at least, who hardly ever see success on, on the first try. But for us, not really a surprise, just a constant awareness that God was walking this journey with us. So we celebrated, and we cautiously waited. When we saw that heartbeat for the first time, that there really was life growing in my tummy, oh, what a joy that was. So we started planning and waiting, and guess what? Our due date was to be Valentine's Day next year. So love bug was on the way. Hopefully this time technology will work. I wanna show you a short video. I promise you it's worth the wait. And if it doesn't happen, we'll just move on. Is it shutting down? All right, so the video has refused to show. In fact, the computer is shutting down. The video was going to be to show you, 
an animation of the first nine weeks of pregnancy. And when I first saw that video, I was in awe. Even though I did go to biology class, there's some... <laughs> Excuse me, computer. There's some things that when you see the visual, it really communicates. And unfortunately, that also means you won't be able to read with me um, Psalm 139. So anyway, the video was the first nine weeks of pregnancy. It just shows how the egg forms and begins to look like a human being. A very tiny little human being, but a human being all the same. But alas, love bug did not stay. The tiny heartbeat stopped. Almost nine weeks of expectation were turned into grief. And in the darkness that would follow, I found my solace in knowing that God knit love bug together in my womb, and all the days ordained for him or her were set before the beginning of time. After all, even though there is no medical explanation for the miscarriage, the doctor goes, it's a mystery to him, but it is not a mystery to God. So Psalm 139 reminds us that God knows all this stuff. You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty, lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light, night, light become night around me like it did, the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my in, inmost being. You knit me and love bug together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So how precious. To me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. So yes, indeed, Labbag was known of the Lord. Labbag days were numbered by the Lord. And I am known of the Lord, even in those hidden places. In the, even in my darkness, God sheds light. In my confusion, and the doctors, God tells me that he is in control. God protects and provides. He allowed me to experience this pain as part of my story. Such knowledge is surely beyond me, but such knowledge is also what carries me through. So I do not understand why Lovebug was squished before she had a chance to live outside of me. But then again, her frame was not hidden from Jehovah. I do not know, and they, neither do the doctors, the physical reason why that pregnancy came to an abrupt end. What I do know is that God does not waste pain. In the weeks since, a really close friend also had a miscarriage two weeks after me. And I was there to walk her through some of it. Another one told me of an earlier miscarriage which she had not grieved over. And together we thought our incomplete thoughts. We comforted each other. During the miscarriage itself, the doctor asked my husband whether I show emotion. I guess he expected drama and theatrics in the operating theater, as he did what had to be done. But my husband responded, faith is a woman of faith. She feels it all very deeply, but as one who has hope. Indeed, God did not promise a life without pain. So with an attitude of acceptance, an openness to God's doing, a reverent responsibility to tell this story, which, as you can imagine, is not easy to tell. A willingness to reach out and to be helped. 
even when those reaching out sometimes end up hurting us with the thoughtlessness of their words. Because you see, as Christians, sometimes we hurt rather than heal when we highlight only the blessings of the baron who bore a son, of Hannah, of Sarah, of Elizabeth, whose wombs God opened, the barren who bore sons, when we forget the untold stories, the stories in the silence of the barren whose wombs were never opened, and they're there. We just are not told those stories. What of them then and now? Let me tell you this story from an African perspective because as you can tell, I have an accent. I was born and raised in Kenya, where to be a childless woman is to be truly and fully cursed. A childless woman is a useless woman. A childless woman might as well never have been born. A childless woman is irresponsible. Perhaps she is refusing to play her role in society. She cannot stand in the assembly because she is not fully woman. Or oh yes, we might open up our pulpits and let her stand with the expectation that eventually she better show that she is fully woman, fully blessed by mothering. So then where do I stand? I who is childless, not by choice but, but by circumstance. I wanted God to open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain, babies perhaps. I wanted God to expand my territory and shield me from pain. I found God will not shield me from pain, but God gives me the strength to bear it because his grace is sufficient. You see, I've got my mind made up that no matter how this story ends, no matter what else is in store, I will hold on to hope. Perhaps, perhaps it's only a matter of time at, until God opens those floodgates, or babies, from my womb or from somebody else. Because it could be biology or it could be adoption. It could be biology and adoption, who knows. Whatever my lot, it is well with my soul. Because I choose faith. When the darkness falls and the night is long, I choose faith. When doctors fail and medicine ends, I choose faith. When I'm in pain and there is no gain, I choose faith. When hope is slim and help is far, I choose faith. I know, yes, I know, in every cell of my being, in every thought in my brain, faith is the only choice. It promises life, it provides hope, it permeates despair, so I choose faith. As I undergo extreme makeover, the hormonal upheavals edition, I choose faith because Sarah did eventually become the mother of nations and Hannah bore Samuel. And you see a prophet came to me and said, I would hold a daughter in my arms. What he did not say is how she'd get there. So just that she would be mine. So I choose faith. In, in spite of my physical frailty, my faith is not fragile. My longing will be fulfilled, but the path is not clear. So I still choose faith, because the God who promised is faithful and faithworthy. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in his hands. So will you choose hope? Will you choose faith when the trials of life come your way? Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you did not promise a life without pain, but you did promise that you'd walk us through it. I thank you because when the struggles do come, Father, Father, we can hold on to you. We can hold on to faith because you are faithful and you're faithworthy. 
Lord, give us the strength to be faithful believers even in the midst of the darkness, even when it's hardest to believe, when it's hardest to have faith. Oh Lord, that we will be found worthy. We praise you because we, were, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So no matter what happens to us, we know you'll be right there with us. Right there, Lord. We praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So go and choose faith. Thank you.